Hello, everyone. Good day to all our viewers. My name is Umi Hussein, Senior Program Officer at UNO Center, and I welcome you all to lecture 29 of our YSBC web lecture series. Today's lecture is on the topic Gramin Trust Experience of International Replication of Gramin Microcredit and Nobin Programs. The speaker today is Abdul Hai Khan, Managing Director, Gramin Trust, and moderator is Raymond Serios, Assistant Director, Strategic Projects Department, Negros Women for Tomorrow Foundation in Philippines. A bit of a background of our speaker and moderator today. Abdul Hai Khan is the Managing Director of Gramin Trust. He has been working with Nobel Laureate Professor Mohammad Yunus more, uh, for more than 40 years. Mr. Khan has a wide range of experiences on Gramin Trust's worldwide replication programs following the Gramin Bank approach. He has conducted many international training programs on various issues on microcredit and social business. He also conducted fact-finding missions in Nepal, Bolivia, and Yemen. Mr. Khan serves as a moderator of a number of boards in different microfinance organizations and social business entities in Bangladesh, India, Kosovo, China, France, Italy, the USA, Yemen, and others. Our moderator today is Raymond Serios. Raymond is the Assistant Director for Strategic Projects and Administration at Negos Women for Tomorrow Foundation, which is one of the first Grameen Bank replications. In this role, he oversees human resources, IT, and various social business projects and advocacies of the foundation. He also oversees NWTFS subsidiary Dunganon Bank, which caters to MSME. Today's topic is a super interesting one, and I think it will be quite appealing to many of the promising and young entrepreneurs and other interested parties joining us today. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. So without further delay, let us welcome Professor Muhammad Yunus for his opening remarks. Professor Muhammad Yunus. Thank you, Urmi, and welcome to all of you who are participating in this uh, great discussion that's coming up. And this is very interesting uh, occasion uh, because we'll be falling back on our own history. Uh, this is to go back to the origin when we began the Grameen Bank and the continued to work there. Uh, in the beginning, uh, if you look back our history, there are two trends that you see, two uh, particular stream that uh, followed. One was the microcredit Grameen Bank, and we uh, followed that track and uh, it became very attractive, uh, very well known and so on. Lots of people were interested to uh, replicate it. And first replication came uh, in a natural way. People got interested, wanted to do it themselves, visited Grameen Bank branches, learned from it and that did it on their own. And the first one was uh, in uh, Malaysia, uh, Amanaiktia, Malaysia. That was the first replication. Then it went to Indonesia, Kariya Usaha Mandiri. Uh, then after that, it's in uh, the Philippines, Ahun Sahira. These are all initiated by the local people. We are attached to them. We are helpful to them, uh, help them to uh, find out the way how it's done. But then uh, we saw the interest in... Uh, we wanted to see how we can formalize this, uh, how to support uh, the uh, people who are interested to do that. That's when the idea of uh, a, an organ separate organization came. And our shot is the creation of Grameen Trust, uh, devoted to helping replication. And that became an expert uh, organization in helping in other countries. So today it is the story of Grameen Trust. It started with Professor Latifi as the head and continued uh, and uh, later on, when Professor Latifi retired from Grameen Trust, uh, Abdul Hai Khan took it over. So this is the story uh, Abdul Hai Khan will be telling uh, what it is. And Abdul Hai uh, worked with the Grameen, uh, Grameen Bank. Uh, he started with Grameen Bank and continued with that, and then moved to Grameen Trust when Professor Latifi was leaving. So he took it over from there. So he will have a lot of interesting stories to tell. So we are waiting for that. And the moderator is, of course, Raymond is uh, coming from 
uh, Negroes Women for Tomorrow. That's how the foundation began. Our relationship at the very early stage after Rahun Sahira, it was the Negroes Women for Tomorrow with Project Dungano, with Cecile as the head of it, a uh, very enterprising woman who wanted to make sure Grameen is replicated in the uh, um, Philippines in a proper way. That's the beginning. And uh, uh, Raymond carries the tradition, history behind it. It's not just uh, it's working for uh, Project Dungana or the Dungana Bank now, and also the organization that is created to support the uh, expansion of the Grameen ideas and so on. So uh, that uh, these two trends about the microcredit and Grameen Trust and uh, Negroes Women for Tomorrow and Project Dunganon, now the bank, Dunganon Bank. And that's the history Raymond br brings in. It's a long history. And today, the conversation between them. So I will not take much time. I'll invite uh, Raymond to take the floor and begin your conversation. Raymond. Thank you very much, Professor Yunus. Thank you very much, Urmi, for that kind introduction. Uh, we now move on to the part where uh, we do a little bit of question and answer with uh, Abdullah Khan. Sir, are you there? Yes. Yes. So uh, starting off, you know, uh, microfinance, and there's a lot of experience, and there, there are a lot of replicators of microfinance all over the world, especially the Grameen methodology. And then comes Grameen Trust. Can you, can, you, can you give us a little bit of background about Grameen Trust? When did it start? Why was it created? And what was the inspiration behind it? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramon. It's very interesting questions. Uh, uh, as you know, given the experiences of the Grameen Bank in successfully reaching the poorest of the poor women with low cost financial services, a lot of people and organizations, donors, foundations, all over the world, approach to novel rate person of the units, they are interested to replicate this model in their region, in their countries. And uh, as you know, I mean, bank is a specialized bank created by by a law passed in the parliament. So the law does not permit Grameen Bank itself to operate outside Bangladesh. But people are interested to replicate this model in their regions, in their countries. So in response to their demand, Novel Red Professor Mahmoud Yunus established Grameen Trust as a not-for-profit organization in the year 1989 to promote and replicate Grameen model microcredit and social business uh, uh, program around the world. So that's the uh, background and inspiration, of course. There is a big inspiration is the uh, success of Grameen Bank and thousands of people from different corners of the world come forward to learn more about Grameen Bank and interested to replicate this model as they have find some sort of hope for their uh, poor people. Uh, that's the impression. That is the success of the Grameen Bank and keen interest of the people and organizations and also donors. So that's our, our inspiration. Thank you. Well, I suppose, you know, uh, the situation in Bangladesh at uh, that time, especially when uh, Grameen was starting and was being replicated elsewhere was different compared to other countries. We've seen, we've seen Grameen being replicated in the developing countries, but now even in the first world countries. What were the early experiences of Grameen Trust in replication? And can you share with us a little bit of the success as yes. well as the challenges that you encountered early on? Thank you, thank you. Basically the Grameen Trust journey is, you know, almost is, we are passing 32 years. So uh, it's experience is a journey, it's a full of thrill and joy. And uh, GT has a multi-dimensional uh, experiences. 
in various uh, uh, in terms of geographical locations, cross culture, languages, there are different types of languages in different countries, even in the, there are some regional languages also, uh, conflict situations, post conflict situation, as well as normal situation. So it's very uh, interesting and challenging experiences, no doubt at all. Uh, it has experiences working in underdeveloped countries, developing countries, what you have mentioned, and also developed countries. So uh, uh, that is also a very interesting story. And what are the success of Gamin Trust or the replication program in different countries? We think Gamin Trust has achieved tremendous success. Uh, as you know, currently Gamin Trust have 153 partners in 42 countries. Gamin Trust covered all the continents mm -hmm. and directly implemented 19 projects in 16 countries. More than 90 million poor families received financial and other non-financial services from these replication projects or programs. And currently, you know, microcredit is very popular term in the financial sectors. Uh, you cannot get any country where microcredit program is not functioning. And Grameen now become a brand name all over the world. So this means Grameen Trust and the replication program and the name Grameen make success. So what are the early experiences and beneficiaries? And that is also very important. Already Honorable Nobel mentions few of our uh, replication pro projects in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines. The early beneficiaries project in uh, uh, Project Dunganun, that's your organizations in uh, and ASHI and CARD of Philippines, uh, ADU, ASHA, SHARE, SARS of India, Nidan, and CSD of Nepal become the early beneficiaries. And more than 1,200 people from 121 countries participated in dialogue program organized by Gramin Trust. So they're also the beneficiaries as because they got the training on hand training. They have spent few nights in the Grameen Bank branches in the rural areas and try to get the very clear idea about the Grameen approach and Grameen methodology. So uh, they are all up there, they are the uh, uh, early beneficiaries of Grameen uh, Trust. Uh, and at present, so far we know more than 175 countries replicated Grameen model uh, in uh, yeah, in uh, on the globe, and you can find any country in the world where there is no microcredit or microfinance uh, uh, are existing. So these are the success of, of the Grameen I Bank. And if we look, those who are the early beneficiaries, what are their present status? It's very interesting. Also, very. Uh, there are many NGOs, MFIs, and non-bank financial institutions now become a microfinance bank. Mm. Uh, for example, Nidan of Nepal, CSD of Nepal, Isaf Ujibon uh, in India, uh, uh, Card Lepu, uh, Card in Philippines, Project Dungarun Bank in Philippines also, uh, uh, Lepu in Nigeria. Many, many, many more uh, uh, in, in, the, in the list. So uh, yeah, that uh, we observed that the institution who did not uh, make success, maybe there, there are a few failures also. Of course, we can, we can easily uh, uh, say that there are some failures, but what are the reasons? Basically, lack of good governance and good leadership, only, only, 
only due to that the, there is the failures. But uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> these are the uh, uh, major factors uh, of success. And uh, if we want to know the success stories of the replication program, yeah. number one is Grameen America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, can you, yeah. Yes. So you mentioned that, you know, uh, Grameen Trust has spread to over 175 countries with so many replications, even more than one in some of these countries, including the Philippines here. And uh, some of these early replicators growing on to be big, huge, actually, uh, microfinance institutions in their country, some going to uh, microfinance banks already. But now you mentioned about some of the more recent replicators, such as Grameen America. America, a first world country. How is that? Uh, how, how, is, how is the replication there? totally different environment compared to where you and I know microfinance really thrives. So that's how very, is that? That's a very inter interesting story, basically. <laughs> a very interesting story and very innovative program. Grameen America is one of the best example of replication, replication program. When we try to start in microcredit program in the USA, as because you know it's a developed country. So everybody said such a developed country, Grameen all will never be succeed. It's impossible to replicate Grameen model in US. So we deployed best Grameen experts in US, asked them to start program without any adjustment. And I, I would like to Mentioned her that Nobel Laureate Professor is mentioned to the expert. Please remember, you are going to very developed country, USA, and the New York City. You will start my credit program from the New York City. We only you only remember. You only know Grammy. You can't know nothing. You know Grammy methodology. You know how to form the group, you know how to form the centers, and you know very well how Grameen methodology of KD delivery and mechanism systems. And very interesting that then the expert, Mr. Sanyaz, now he is going to Australia to start Grameen Australia also uh, on the basis of his experience in New York City. So uh, initially, of course, it is tough in the New York City to start this type of program, but they have gradually they have started from Jackson Heights of New York City in, in, in Queens. Uh, 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 and there is no, no single adjustment. If you will be, visit the Grameen Emblica, any branch, New York City, California, Los Angeles, Texas, North Carolina, wherever you go, you can see the copy book of Bangladesh Grameen Bank. There is no adjustment, no modification, nothing. What we are doing in the village of Bangladesh, same thing we are doing in the New York City, in the Texas, in the Los Angeles, San Francisco, everywhere. So that is the very interesting in the developed country uh, we are doing. And now they have, they have started with one single branch. Now they have 29 branches in 16 cities. And uh, they have disbursed more than 21.70 million US dollars. And their recovery rate is 100%. Still, within this, during this pandemic also. And during the pandemic, that is their innovation. They have digitalized their whole program. That means conduct the central meetings via digital platform, recruit the new members via the digital platform, 
home visit by a digital platform, a group training, continuous group training through digital platform, group recognition, loan disbursement, everything. And that's why yeah. Uh, they, they are doing uh, very well and now they open new branches and a few months back they have got uh, uh, they have come uh, come to an agreement with one uh, blue meridian to start special program for the elevating black women that is Afri mm. african american women for only for the african american women and they have already started open one branch already recruited 44 black women and still they are doing very, very well. So, uh, and uh, recently the MDRC, you know, is, uh, the research organization of the USA. So uh, they have uh, uh, conducted the impact study, last 36 month impact study on Grameen America. And they have found very positive result from the borrowers also. So that's the success story of Grameen America. Uh, and yeah. they have a plan within next five years, they will open uh, total that the, the bands number will be 52. Wow, phenomenal. Thank you for sharing that with us uh, about Grameen America and uh, where they are now and how they, how they went there, but how they, they arrived at that, but you were saying it's the same process, the same methodology, same in Bangladesh, same in America. So what's the secret of this methodology, if I may ask you? Secret is the <laughs> <laughs> that is the secret of Grammy methodology. That means we take, as you know, the Grammy type approach based on the trust and confidence only between the lender and the recipients. Mm -hmm. So the relationship between the group members and the organization is the secret, basically number one. And you know, all over the world where we replicated Grameen uh, methodology, uh, we never um, used borrowers, clients, we used mm -hmm we treat them as a member. That means they are the, our family member. They become the family member of Grameen yeah. organizations. So uh, that will create some sort of relationship, number one. Number two, very dedicated and motivated, self-motivated staff members by providing the intensive training program to them. So we try to build up the staff members and the supervision and uh, monitoring mechanism of, of the of the Grameen. So these three are the key secrets of the success of the numbers. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. But moving on, one other replication that, that really interests me and probably a lot of the audience is Grameen China. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you share? Can you share a little bit about that and what sure, role did Grameen sure. Trust play in that replication? Thank you. That is also another interesting story and history. Uh, due to time constraints, I always I try to say briefly, <laughs> <laughs> as because it's a long story. You know, in China, basically, in 1990, from 1994, we are in the China, but through local partners. We have many partners in China also. They try to replicate gaming model in their regions, in their countries. But last couple of years, you know, Mr. Gaozhan, he's the prominent journalist uh, in China, but inspired by Nobel Laureate Professor Mahmoud Yunus. Then he communicated with Grameen Trust and Nobel Laureate Professor Mahmoud Yunus. And finally, uh, he established Gaming China and Gaming Limited uh, uh, as a social business. Uh, entity uh, uh, and uh, to replicate exact two two Grameen model in China, what I have mentioned, what we are replicating in uh, United States. Uh, uh, so, Grameen Trust, we are providing all sorts of technical assistance, training, and support to the Grameen China. 
and as a managing director of Gramin Trust, you can, the managing director of Gramin Trust become the uh, chairman of the board of Gramin China also. Uh, and Gramin, general manager of Gramin Trust and one other uh, 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 MD of Gramin companies, also the board member of Gramin China. Uh, um, uh, uh, and uh, Gramin China uh, implementing Gramin model with financial support from China Construction Bank. And the construction bank provide the funding support to establish 10 branches in 10 locations. And they have established the branch and started the program. And now they are going to enter another agreement with Bank of Communications in China. So they will provide funds to start this type of program in Beijing district. Uh, uh, and uh, they are implementing as because Mr. Gaozan, sometimes uh, as, a, as a chairman of the board, I tried to uh, convince him to make some little modification or adjustment considering the socioeconomic condition and the culture of the China. But he said, no, I am strict to replicate two two gram in, in China. And here he is replicating two two gram in, uh, that is copy book of gram in, uh, in China also. So, uh, and uh, this, this 10 brands is making success. Their uh, repayment rate is also more than 99%. Uh, they have uh, a group based lending, what uh, in their main methodology they are providing. Uh, and that's why, on the basis of the success of these 10 brands, now Bank of Communications interested to make an agreement with them in China to. Uh, open few more branches in other areas also. So uh, that is also a, a very interesting stories uh, uh, of Grameen China. Wow, wow. So, you know, Grameen Trust replicating uh, the Grameen methodology in 175 countries, New, even in New York, China, particularly soon in Beijing. Uh, what's next? And you know, apart from over time, apart from replicating microfinance, my replicating Grameen microfinance, did the role of Grameen Trust change over time, or were there were there new were there additions to the role that you that you guys played over time? The uh, uh, the role, role the Grameen Trust role <coughs> uh, uh, in replicating uh, Grameen model is. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing process, it's an ongoing programs. We are trying to replicate more programs in more countries. Uh, uh, but uh, recently, we are more focusing on the social business, particularly the no equity program. Uh, so simultaneously, we are repl replicating both this program. Michael get it, it's very basic things, you know. and uh, another is micro equity program that is venture uh, fund a branch capital fund and then start a novin program. So, uh, in, yeah, in and, and if you look at the Grameen replication, direct replication programs like Grameen America, Grameen China, all these microfinance programs we have tried to replicate and implement it following the principle of social business. So these are the social business entity. Right? We are providing micro credit, micro finance, but as a social business. And yeah. Nobin purely social business, uh, under the umbrella of social business, we are providing the uh, Nobin program. And initially, little bit changed. Initially, you know, as, a, as, as our uh, very <coughs> beginning, uh, support organization, partner organizations, you know. Initially, Grameen Trust provided the financial support as a startup capital, mm. seed capital, as because, you know, if we look uh, in the early 80s, nobody knows mm. about what we get it. Nobody, yeah. uh, there is no funds, there is no resources to start this type of program in their countries. That's why Nobel Reward Process you know, tried to start a movement and finally, most of the donor organizations and 
uh, come forward to provide funds to Grameen Trust to replicate this model in different countries. So initially we provided the startup capital, we called it seed capital, and also uh, scale up capital also uh, to the, the, but now, nowadays we are not in the position to provide any funds to anybody else. <laughs> Only we have provided the technical assistance, training and capacity building uh, issues. Uh, so uh, currently if, anyone interested either in Nobin or in microfinance, they will mobilize the funds and all resources. We are implementing the program as a uh, uh, management partners. This, yeah. this, this, this is the changing yeah. of rules only. Uh, okay. uh, we are not providing any financial support, anyone uh, of the okay. program, even in the direct implementation program, even if you see the USA, China, yes. we are not providing any, any source of, of funding sure. support to them. Uh, they are mobilize their own funds. We provide them technical assistance and expertise. And even, okay. e even if, if they need, we we'll also provide some human resources also for starting this type of uh, uh, program. And recently, we are most more, more focused on social business, basically. And if someone interested to implement or replicate microcredit program, we tell them, okay, no problem. You have to do microcredit as a social business. Then we, we will with you without <laughs> that. We are not interested to uh, yeah. make a partnership with you. So uh, microfinance as a social business and no, no inequity program. So these okay. are the, our current uh, programs. So it's really still a technical, technical, uh technical it's help just, yeah. and at the same time, uh, you know, uh, especially uh, training. And that's, you know, uh, in, in my organization with uh, Dunganon, yeah. that's something that we that has been very valuable over time. And you're talking about the Nobin program right now. And, you know, a lot of our, a lot of the people that lis are listening in or watching us today are really coming from the, are replicators of the, of, 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 Grameen, of Grameen Bank microfinance program. They're more familiar with the microfinance program. Can you get us through the basics of the no bin program? What is no bin? And maybe give an, as an example of what this micro equity program is so that it, it's very clear in the minds of especially microfinance practitioners and those interested in our audience today, please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this is also a very, uh, very interesting and innovative program. As because you know, unemployment <clears throat> is a global problem now. And uh, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this unemployment problem is increasing day by day in every country. Most of the people uh, lost their jobs uh, or pay half or certain percentage, they are not uh, getting salary. So basically, Nobin Equity Program is a, is, a, is a program turning unemployment into entrepreneurship. As because we ha had a lot of experiences in the Grameen Replication Program. Through this microcredit program, we try to build millions of millions of entrepreneurs around the world. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are also those who recipient of micro credit, they become entrepreneurs also. But particularly, mm -hmm. the, we are not focusing the unemployment issue. It's the general okay. financial services. So Nobin is, is turning unemployment into entrepreneurship and to address this problem, Nobel Red Professor uh, Yunus innovated this Nobin program. It's the brain style of uh, child of Professor Yunus. And it's a social business program of the Grameen Trust. Uh, and the other Grameen companies also replicate, uh, also implemented this Nobin program in Bangladesh. And what are the main objectives of this program? Actually, everybody wants to know. To provide financial support in the form of equity not credit. So we mobilize the venture capital fund. And then from this venture capital fund, we try to 
provide them the equity funding to the entrepreneurs. To start new business, those who are unemployed wants to do something. He has a plan, he has a mission, he has a vision, wants to do, but due to the uh, financial constraint, they are not doing something else. So uh, we provided them startup uh, funds mm. or some have very teeny business. Now they want yes. to expand their business, but shortage of the running capital, they are not able to expand their business. So we also provide them uh, uh, running capital to them also. And to create the opportunities to the entrepreneurs. Okay. Or creation new jobs for other unemployed youth in their locality also. Uh, Sir, and if I may. Not to job seeking job, but rather to offer jobs to others. Okay. So if I may interrupt you. Yes. Just, just, to, just to really clarify this for everybody. Uh, sorry about the uh, about going into it very deeply, but I want I want the audience to to uh, to come home and really understand this Nobin program. When is it proper to provide credit or microfinance versus providing equity? So when do I provide credit or when do I provide equity? Uh, because you know. If you provide credit, there is a lot of differences between credit and equity. I think everybody knows it very well. Uh, because uh, uh, equity, we provide them as a partner of his or her business. But if you will provide credit to someone, you never be think you become the partner of this business or something else. So when we provide equity to the entrepreneurs. So as a bank from venture capital fund, so it's a partnership business between the entrepreneurs and the government trust or the organization, those who uh, implement this program. So uh, <clears throat> if there is any risks, if there is any uh, losses, ideally uh, both partner will bear these losses, but in the credit, there is no scope to bear the losses from the uh, business or, or the projects also, uh, number one. Number two, as a partner of his business, we provided a lot of technical assistance to the entrepreneurs. Maybe, mm. maybe someone may, uh, for the, uh, uh, as a debate, someone may try to say that uh, those who are providing the credit, they are also providing training, this, 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 and something else. But we are providing very intensive technical assistance. How to start a business, how to run the business, how to keeping his accounts, how to maintain his accounts, how to maintain the inventory, how to uh, make more marketing. So this this will not be provided by the creditors necessarily. They are provide the credit and just wants to uh, recover the money. But as a uh, due to the investment, as, as because it's the investment. So there is a responsibility of both parties. As he all, the entrepreneurs also invest money, the organization also invest money. So both parties are responsible to make a success of the business. And uh, uh, in the Nobin, we try to collect daily report from his business through SMS. But in the credit, you, you never say, uh, collect a daily report or uh, uh, weekly report from the uh, clients or the borrowers. Maybe the field office will send a weekly report to the headquarters, but clients will not directly send any report or about his hard business. Also. Maybe the loan officers or the center managers will go and visit. That is the different thing. But here, every day before close his business or shops, he will send SMS five basic information to the headquarters about his business, daily sales, daily 
purchase daily uh, margin cash in bank cash in debt like this so these are the basic differences okay and uh, and uh, you know for the credit program no need to prepare a business plan or project proposal mm -hmm. but for the entrepreneurs for every single entrepreneurs they need to prepare a business plan and a uh, um, uh, project proposal for his proposed project or business and then he will place it to the design lab there is a lab committee mm -hmm. headed by the managing director of the organization so they have placed it to the um, lab and the lab committee asks different type of questions about his business about sales marketing his obligations risks uh, challenges and if he or she the entrepreneurs will uh, give good answers and the committee uh, satisfied about their answers then the project will be approved so these are not happening in 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 credit program yeah so it's basically real part it's a real partnership between the entrepreneurs yeah, yeah, and yeah, exactly. and the organization so real hand holding uh, to uh, to to work it out no uh, yes. and make sure and make sure that it becomes successful but something that comes to mind is uh, are actually startups and in the startup scene we've seen there's a very high fail failure rate and everything uh, you know, and, and it's very long gestating. It takes a long time to see to see the success there. What has been your experience with 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 the Nobin program? Can you tell us one success story of replicating the Nobin program? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, of course. If you provide investment or credit to anybody else without any collateral. Or without any guarantee, of course there is a risk, no doubt at all. And every business has a risk. But we have an experience; it's, it's very tolerable risk. And there are ma many success stories in the replication of Gramin uh, and Nobin. So you know, we have one. Gramin replication program in Kosovo, and it's very interesting. We have started uh, in 2000 after the conf conflict of the Kosovo war, uh, uh, and we have started Gramin replication program. And still, it's 20 years old, uh, old program. Now it's, it's running very well. Uh, we have four branches in four regions, and uh, we serve more than 21,000 um, members. So uh, in 2016, Professor, uh, Professor Lotifi and me visited Kosovo and we met with the governor of the central bank of Kosovo. Then government said in the meeting, he mentioned that we are in the tension as because the unemployment rate in Kosovo is more than 43%. And our young number of young people is increasing day by day. So we don't know what we will do. Then we said, yes, we have solutions. Professor Inus innovated one thing for the unemployed young, especially the youth, that is Nobin. And we tried to brief about him. And he said, okay, if you will start this program in Kosovo, that's good for us also. Then we provided training to our staff members from CU to center managers and ask them to prepare a policy. And we provide them the guidelines and advice, is technical assistance, support, everything. And then from, I think, uh, December 2016, they have started this Nobin program in Kosovo. And initially they have started only for the children of the Kosovo Grameen members. Then gradually they expand for all other youth also. And currently they have 537 entrepreneurs 
and disbursed more than 3 million euro. And very interesting is that these 537 entrepreneurs has created 1,650 jobs for others in addition to their self-employment. Uh, uh, and there are many success stories of the entrepreneurs, uh, uh, those who started with, uh, and there is a, uh, one, one guy uh, we have found, he has started with uh, a small uh, milk cow farm. He has uh, three or four cow. cow. Now uh, he has 110 cow, and it's a big farm. And uh, from uh, financial support from Gremin Kosovo, he expanded his farm. And um, uh, every day he got uh, 400 liter milk from the cows. And uh, also uh, uh, there are some uh, cow he tried to sell in the uh, butchery uh, shops also. So uh, uh, this, there is, lot of success stories uh, of the Nobin. It's, no, it's new program, but many of them. And in Bangladesh, you know, three gaming company implemented this program and we have more than uh, not about 70,000 entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. There are thousands of thousands of uh, success stories of these 70,000 entrepreneurs. Wow. Thank you. And, uh, and Thank you. Recently, recently, you'll be happy to know the Grameen Yemen Foundation also replicate this mm. program in their countries. You know, Yemen, Yemen okay. is now passing very difficult situations in terms of yes. conflict and yeah. they have a hunger, poor, yeah. all sorts of Amazing. crisis they Amazing. have. But 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 they are uh, they have initially they started micro credit program. Now they have yeah. started Novin program uh, okay. in Yemen also. So that, 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 has been, that has been the story of Grameen Trust. Recently, you will be happy to know that recently we got an uh, invitation from UNO Sports Hub of Paris, this, uh, mm. in Paris. Uh, they are interested to replicate Novin program in uh, Sen Senegal and Ivory Coast wow. for, the at wow. at for the Atlas one list, the sports, sportsman only. And we are providing the technical assistance and other support to them to replicate this nomin in Senegal and uh, Ivory Coast also. Okay, so our time is coming to is almost coming to an end. Let me ask you one last question. You know, you've Ramin Trust pushing uh, replicating the microcredit program and now replicating the nobin program pretty much soon, it will be all over the world as well, the Nubin program. How else do you see Grameen Trust in the future? And what is there, what is the role that it will, it will play or it will continue to play within the world or the wider world of social business? Thank uh, you. Those are my last questions to end this. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramon. It's, it's also very, 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 uh, important, interesting questions, basically. As you know, as poverty is existing and unemployment problem is also gradually increases, we don't know when the curve will be, go down about of unemployment. Uh, the, so there should be a, a potentiality of Grameen Trust to do more work in the field of microcredit micro and Novin also. And in the, in the field of microcredit, there is also a lot of innovations, you know, uh, are going on. So I think uh, there is a potentiality. And uh, almost uh, all the countries have their own goals to achieve uh, zero poverty and to uh, at, uh, achieve the SDGs also. So there is a very, important component of the SDGs is oh, to make zero poverty and also reduce the unemployment problem. So I think uh, poverty reduction and to make zero unemployment uh, is one of the focus area of SDGs. 
So in, there is a future to work these two areas. So gram interest rule will be, I think, more strengthened and uh, will be more expands. And we are getting the request uh, uh, from different corners also. Uh, recently, we have got one request from the Emirates Red, Red Crescent. They are interested to start either Nobin or microfinance in Zoran for the Syrian refugees, also in the refugees, refugees and IDPs. Uh, and we have got a request to replicate microdit program in Mexico also. So I think uh, uh, our uh, future work will be more strengthened. Uh, 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 and uh, we will be more focused, of course, we will be more focused on Nobin equity program. We have also got requested from the uh, government of Maharashtra in India to implement Nobin equity program in, 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 in their states. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so as GT become a leading organization and have a very interesting, challenging, and encouraging experiences to replicate microfinance, microcredit. Uh, and recently, you know, the microfinance uh, organizations also try to um, raise their bias and try to implement green microfinance due to the global warming yeah. around the world. So, uh, so we, we had an experience of green microfinance also as because of, in early from day one, Grameen is doing green microfinance. So I think uh, implement, so, and we are tried to implement best quality uh, microfinance program and Nobin program in any country. So we think Grameen Trust should contribute more in the coming years. And uh, continuously Grameen Trust has what I have mentioned, the request to implement the program. And that's why I think our uh, future focus will be Nobin, number one. Uh, equity program, uh, as because this is the very, mm. uh, very uh, important uh, component, uh, not only in uh, in trust or in Bangladesh. Whole world is the same scenario in yeah. in the uh, terms of unemployment, and we will try to implement micro finance or micro credit program, following the principle of social business. So, of course, I think our future um, work will be more um, innovative, more creative, and we will try to uh, contribute more in, the, in, in this field. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for this conversation. This, uh, this time you, you know, uh, for opening up uh, our minds, the minds of the audience, listening to how uh, we, Grameen Trust has replicated the microcredit program, and at the same time is starting to is continue or starting to replicate the Nobin program now, and where uh, Grameen Trust is headed, particularly focusing on on the Nobin program. And of course, you know uh, the basics of all this is still, as you said earlier, good governance, leadership, yeah. relationship with the beneficiaries and of course making sure that your staff are motivated works for microcredit definitely works for nobin so that we all are happy in this world of social business thank you so much for this conversation thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. for your moderation thank you. thank you hope to see you again <laughs> definitely and now i turn over i turn it over to urmi thank you Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Thanks. you all. Yes. Thank you all for attending this lecture. It was indeed very informative and gave us uh, good insights into the working of the institution. Mr. Khan and Mr. Serios, we really appreciate your time, enthusiasm, and great conversation, which just happened. It is wonderful to hear the stories behind the revelation, and I am sure the audience members greatly enjoyed the conversation too. Thank you to our audience members for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again in our future lectures. 
I now request the IT team to play our slides for next lecture. We'll end the session with lecture, with our slides. Thank you. Happy New Year to all.